Well, it is a lovely morning here at the, uh, I don't know, we don't have a name for the shop. But anyway, we are starting on part four of Ben's LS Miata build. So last time we went to put the heads on, didn't have the head bolts. Ben got the right head bolts, put those on, got the trunnion upgrade rocker arms in. He put the, this is something I did on my motor. You can kind of see it uh, right there. It's a billet uh, dumbbell. So basically that keeps the oil from bypassing the passages that it needs to go through basically. And if, if the old one wears out, you can have oil pressure loss and things like that. I did it with the dry sump. Long story short, did that. New rear main seal, so he's putting the rear cover back on and then we can start getting it. The other stuff done. Goal for the end of the day would be to have this in the car. We also have the Holly Terminator. So there is a possibility that we can get this thing running this video. So let's get started. The front and rear covers are on. So the front cover, you gotta install it loosely because it is centered by the crank pulley. So there's a special expensive tool for pressing the crank pulley on, but there is the simple sloppy mechanics trick. You just heat up the inside to expand it a little bit, pop it on, as soon as it hits the cold crank, it shrinks and it's locked on. The only tricky thing with this is if you underdo it, you'll end up having to pull it off to heat it up more and put it back on. But you don't have to heat it up that hot. Go, 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 go. And then just slam it. Slam it. You, you already think you might have. Uh, I mean, I think I'll get it. I think that's it. You just gotta like push it all the way in in one shot before yeah. it cools off. It's, it's tough. All right, front cover's on, rear cover's on, crank pulley is on and fully seated. Pickup tube is in. He did the same kind of brace I have. It basically, there's two bolt holes here. So I'm assuming GM at one point had a two bolt flange here but all the ones are single bolt. They only have one bolt on this side. And what can happen is this can flex, it can tear the O-ring and then you lose suction. So basically your oil pump is sucking like a, through a straw with a hole in it and you lose oil pressure and you blow your motor up. So anyway, it's kind of an important, simple, cheap little mod just to make sure that never happens. We got an OEM gasket, clean the surface off our TV, the corners, and then ready to rip. You need to adjust this too. Time to throw the old pan skis on. It's a big moment, this is, uh, basically closing up the motor cams done valve springs trunnion upgrade heads are on head gaskets bottom end stuff pickup tube now it's pan time <clears throat> this is a nicer pan than the one i used on my motor she's got better baffling and stuff it's 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 more baffled so we were kind of conflicted on whether or not he should do a dry sump like i did or do a, a nice baffled pan with an AccuSump. At the end of the day, with the pros and cons, it made sense to do the nice pan with the AccuSump since he already had the pan and like he's not gonna get as much money as it's worth selling it. So it seemed like the best route. It should be solid. It'll be kind of an interesting test. I mean, hopefully nothing goes wrong, but it'll be interesting to see, you know, if this one doesn't hold up as well or whatever. I think it'll be fine though. Tons of people run nice baffled pan, AccuSump, no issues. So yeah, you just gotta put bolts in, tighten her down. And we can move on to clutch on, trans on, put her in the subframe, put her in the car. You getting hyped, Ben? Yeah, we'll be hyped when it's in the car. Ben drove my car this weekend. I was hoping to give him some extra motivation. I'm out here working on my car, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> the long block is done. It's about ready to go in. We need to work on the accessories. Basically, the plan is waiting on the uh, clutch pilot bearing to freeze. Once that's done freezing, we'll leave it for an hour or two. We can install that and then we can install the clutch and stuff in the trans. While we're waiting on that to freeze, I am going to be welding some and fittings to this water pump. So this is just a stock replacement water pump. Uh, ben pulled the fittings out of it. I cleaned them up some because uh, I used just regular rubber hose on mine and used barb fittings on here, but we did and fittings on his coolant expansion tank. So it'll look a lot nicer, but the only downfall to doing AN instead of uh, rubber hose like I did is you have to weld the fittings onto the water pump. So this is cheap trying to cast aluminum. So I've cleaned it up as best I can. Uh, we're gonna try it, see what happens. Water cooler is so loud. I uh, got the fittings welded on. It's kind of funny, the uh, water pump aluminum seemed to weld better than the fitting aluminum. But either way, they're all on. There's no little pinholes or anything to worry about. Definitely better than I thought for uh, eBay cast aluminum, China cast aluminum. So 
now that's done, uh, he can put that on the motor. Right now he's working on dropping sockets into the pan of oil below and getting them covered in oil. It's a method of his that he likes to use called uh, bolt uh, socket lubrication. <laughs> now anyway, he got his uh, pilot bearing in, which that's about where it needs to go. He's getting his flywheel on. So he is also using a Monster Miata clutch, which is what I have in the RX-7. So this clutch setup is really cool. So I have kind of a hodgepodge clutch kit on my car, which is like a stock LS1 flywheel and pressure plate, but with a 350Z disc because the 350Z transmission has 350Z splines, even though we're using a T56 bell housing to bolt it on. It's a lot of stuff. It's a mess of stuff, but normally you have to get LS, LS, and then a Z clutch disc, which works, but it doesn't quite fit right. It's like a little bit too small diameter. Um, so anyway, I was talking to Monster Clutches when I was getting a clutch for the RX-7, which has a T56 in it. So I was able to use just a standard clutch kit from them. But I was like, oh man, it'd be really cool if you guys made uh, like a normal LS clutch kit with a 350Z center spline disc. And they're like, we already have that. We sell them all the time. So anyway, they make a clutch disc, full size F body, like what you would find in their F body clutch kit for a T56 but with the Z center splines. Like that is absolutely the way to go if you're doing a CD on an LS. So really cool that they offer that. Eventually, whenever I uh, inevitably pull the motor back out of this car, I'll probably upgrade to one of their clutches because this flywheel is the lightweight one. It's, it's 18 pounds. The stock one is freaking 28 pounds. It's 10 pounds lighter than the uh, stock one. And it's a super nice flywheel. I put one in the RX-7. It's got much beefier dowels. It's got three of them. Just a much better setup, in my opinion, based on all the LS clutches I've seen. So I am a little jealous that Ben gets to run a better clutch kit than I off the rip, because we'll learn things. That beautiful oil filter relocation. Dude's got freaking ARP everything. ARP pressure plate bolts, ARP flywheel bolts. This is a freaking built motor, guys. It's got ARP hardware. Oh yeah. Freaking built motor, dude. Turn it, twist it right. Yeah, push. Yeah, I'm just getting these right. No, I know. You got it where you think it's lined up? I think up. so, yeah. Easy to do it at this height because you can get on a level with it easily. Looks very close. Looks yeah, I was basically busting it. Clutch is on, woo! It's a big step, clutch is completely on. I mean, motor is ready to go besides intake manifold and accessories. It's a very satisfying feeling when the engine comes off the stand for what should be the last time. You know, cause you get it, it's on a stand for a while until you're ready, now it's off the stand, man. That means stuff's getting real, dude. So next we gotta put the trans on. Uh, hopefully it goes on smooth. If we get the, if we got the thing lined up right by eye, we'll be good. If not, then we will struggle. Oh, it's going right on. Gotta make sure we have some bell housing bolts ready. We can suck it right on. Alrighty, trans is on. Slave is on with lines for both the clutch and the bleeder. Pretty much anytime I use a setup like this, T56 slave, I use a remote bleeder line because otherwise the bleed screw is like up in here and really like impossible to get to. Whereas with this line, you can bring it all the way up, put it in your clutch reservoir and just bleed it back to itself. Super handy. Those lines are on, clutch is on, slave, trans, everything that we need to put it in the car. So now we need to get it up and in wave subframe. I would say one of the hardest parts of building cars is trying to plan everything out. So we were gonna do the brake lines after the engine was in, but then we realized we could reference my car and remembered where you know I needed to run mine, but basically we're rebending the brake lines because normally there would be a big shelf here. Like this was a big part of this essentially that we had to cut out to fit the V8. So the factory lines ran here because they couldn't run here. But with the V8, we have to run them over here tucked to this side. So anyway, working on rebending those, getting them where they need to go so they'll be clear of the uh, engine and exhaust and stuff. Then we gotta put some heat wrap on them. Then we can install the engine. But definitely would have not been fun to do this after the engine was in the car. But that's part of building cars. You don't think about it. You put the engine in, then you're like, let me toss the brake lines in. Then you're like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> pretty much finished up the brake line routing. Definitely would have been better to do new lines, but that line runs all the way to the rear. So we'd have to get like a spool of line and order the right fittings and yada yada. So, I mean, this this looks decent. It looks a lot better than my car. P-clamped, Ben's putting one more clamp on and then we can move on to engine in subframe, engine in car.
Look at that, guys. Oh, I'm hyped. Let's do it. Well, it was a little bit of a struggle just getting one of this, the studs on this side to go into the subframe. Uh, from what I've learned when I did mine, because mine I had some issues trying to get some bolts in and I thought it was all these other things and it seems to always end up being something's catching. So like the trans is catching a little bit on the side there because of like the orientation of everything. We got that clearance from the trans, was just enough to get the stud to go on, you know, one of those things. So if you're ever putting a motor in and it, it's not going in, it's probably caught on something. Something somewhere. But anyway, that's a, an LS and a Miata. Hey, Woo! -hoo. My line. I gotta I gotta say your line because it's your car that I'm helping you with this time. Look at that, boys. That's a lot of room. Now we just gotta tighten all the bolts down. Did you get the rear bolt in on that side? I got both of them in on that oh, side. Oh good. So hopefully I can get them both in. Anytime you put a motor in, even if you're not ready to, you gotta put the intake manifold on there just to see. Boy, that makes it look so much better. Hold on guys, we got more. But wait, there's more. If you watch now, you'll see more parts go on. Ben's just getting his workout in for the day, climbing up the uh, shelf six times. Will he make it down without dying? Stay tuned to find out. Oh, ad break. <laughs> oh my God, Ben just fell. Or is he dead? Is that blood? Oh, that's paint. That's blue paint. Thought it was blood. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah, put this one on. Taylor hates the covers. I, I don't them. hate them. I'm indifferent on them. I like them and I dislike them at the same time. They're a little dirty, though. Eh, uh, well, too bad, bud. I mean, you might be able to fit it if you trim it. What? Your AN hose. Oh, we'll cut it around there. Bada boom, son. Bada boom. Car is done. Finished. Let's go rip. All right, so we test fitted the header again just to figure out all our clearances. So he needed to figure out line routing because he's got to run one fuel line. He's running returnless, so the filter regulator will be mounted back there. We'll get into that later. And then he's got to run an oil line for from his AccuSump, which is mounted in the trunk. So we put that in there so we can figure that out. He's working on trans mount line routing and all that stuff. The next thing we need to do is get the radiator mounted. So it's just a universal radiator. Oh, we got to do this, something with the cap too. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to have to cut that and block that off. And then we're going to have to make some mounts for it. So we've got these two tabs on the car um, with, with threaded holes basically. So we're going to build to those at the top. The bottom we'll have to build something off the car and off the radiator, but you know, Shouldn't be too, too difficult. My only concern is this radiator has got this coating on it. So I don't, I really don't know how it's gonna be to weld. I'm definitely gonna have to make sure to grind through that and get it really clean. But I don't know, it, should, it, should, it shouldn't be too tricky of a project. So let's get into it. Start fitting, cutting, and welding. Okay, so I'm gonna have to cut this uh, cap off first before I can even get it fit it up where it needs to go to start making the other mount. So we'll do that first. The bandsaw is my favorite cutting method if I need to be precise and get a clean cut. It's a little awkward for something like this, but works way better. So what I'm gonna, I did, I just put this cardboard down so I don't scratch the radiator. Just gotta make sure we get a good start. I'd rather there be a little too much left over and then cut in too far. Beautiful 
now we got a nice flat surface to weld to. Not perfect, but for the uh, tools I had to work with, came out solid. So I built this adjustable hand rest when I was building the coolant expansion tank for this car. And uh, man, this thing has come in handy pretty much every time I've had to weld anything. Because otherwise I'd have to float my hand here to tack this. And when I weld it, I would be able to rest it here, but over here I'd be floating in the air. So at least we got a nice spot to uh, rest our hand. Okay, everything's cleaned. Rods are clean, this is clean. Tack it on and weld it. All right, well, that's done. Easy peasy. Now we can move on to test fitting and figuring out how to mount it. Okay, this one's a little something. trickier just because it's like gotta be exact, but. Okay, that's about perfect placement wise. Completely tucks under the radiator support, which is why this expansion tank exists if you look. The radiator is lower than the highest point in the cooling system, so that's why we build this expansion tank, so that way, bringing the fill point up, this is now the highest point in the cooling system, this is the cap and everything, which is why we deleted the cap off this one, because we won't be filling from here, we'll be filling from here, which is going to kind of suck. Mine has a cap on the outlet, so I can fill the radiator and then bleed it from here, but it'll work. got these little aluminum brackets made up. Oh, you can't even really see that one on that side. Hold on, let me show you from this side. Uh, so you can kind of see it there. So I need to weld them to the radiator itself. I've got them welded on both sides. They're fit up, They're, they fit good. Radiator's in the right spot, all that's good. Ben is working on making some metal brackets to come off the car, basically bolt to a tab that I will weld on while we're on the radiator. Uh, but first we gotta finish knocking this out. So I actually have to pull them back out clean this surface a bit, and then I'm gonna to try to tack them in the car. This one's gonna be real tricky, because it's really, really not easy to get to, but we'll see what happens. Wish me luck. <laughs> you know you're a good welder, guys. <laughs> Profab, hit him up for fab work. Not only does he sell me auto parts, he does fab work. You know these things called gloves? What? <laughs> I actually tacked it! So proud. Alright, got everything marked. I'd prefer to tack it in the car, but everything I need to weld would have been very difficult, so.
right, all the mounting points are done and welded on. So we just gotta put it back in the car for the final time and uh, drill these holes for the mounts on the car itself and we're done, almost there. to get a good a drilling good, angle at it. Yeah. Well, there were some trials. There were some tribulations. <laughs> uh, just trying to get the inside here. I knew this was going to be tricky, and uh, it was. But, got them welded on. These tabs came out just fine. And then, down here, we've got Ben's metal bracket, and then we've got uh, the aluminum part that I welded on and what we did was we basically drilled through with a bolt hole that was the size to where an a M6 bolt could thread itself and then opened up the steel hole a little bit more so basically we'll probably put a nut on it but the bolt is threaded into the aluminum that's a really nice way of doing it because then you don't have to deal with getting a wrench and a nut on this side when you go to take the radiator out you just pull the bolt out because it's threaded into the aluminum so it is super freaking solid though like it does not flex move at all and it is perfectly located it is tucked as far back as it can go so like i said some trials some tribulations but at the end of the day it came out really good so i'm happy with it has it been happy with it no dude super happy with it sweet dude that's a big step engine in radiator in yeah. there's really the only other major thing is chassis wiring yeah yeah chassis wiring is the next big project mm -hmm. so he's been getting the interior cleaned out because he's going to paint the whole interior paint the cage once he does that Chassis wiring can start. We can get the holly in, get it wired up and running. For tonight, I think we're done. So Ben's been doing some body work. He got a stud gun to pull some of the dents out. So there was kind of a big dent on each side. So this one he's got pretty straight without Bondo. That one I tried to pull just the bottom out, but I couldn't really sand that stuff down without pulling the over fender off anyway. So I gotta pull the top dent out. Uh, okay, yeah, so he pulled he pulled it out here. Basically, he's not going for like show car or anything, but basically if the side skirt bolted on the way it was, the side skirt would be sucked in two inches and the over would be kind of sucked in two inches and it would look terrible. So he just wants to get it flat enough to where with the over on and the side skirt on, it looks normal. So he's working on that, Bondo in it, sand in it. Today, he's got Vincent helping him set up a makeshift paint booth. He's painting the blue, the body here, the door jams and stuff, right? Windshield frame. Door jams, windshield frame. Like pretty much anywhere where you would see the paint. The car, we did the inside of this like the same as we did the lower part of the frame rails up front. Yeah, the undercoating under stuff. So the goal is basically just make all this blue. blue. That'd be nice to have all this blue too. Yeah. I don't like inside the gas cap. My yeah. gas cap's not even black. Because yeah, I've never had, <laughs> you know, like it's always been multicolored. Yeah, yeah, there's always spots. Okay, one time the outside of this car was pretty, but the rest of it was not pretty. <laughs> yeah, no, this car was, oh, we won't, we won't get into yeah. it. Yeah, so anyway, that's what they're doing. Well, as you can see, the car is uh, not blue. So I had intended on getting through the blue painting and the interior painting before we ended this video out, but when Ben went to spray the blue the other day, he had some issues, either you know, the paint wasn't mixed right, too much air pressure, or just user air, or some, something happened, and there was a lot of runs on the first coat, so he had to kind of let it dry, sand it down, and now while he's doing that, he's going in through and kind of making the body work a little nicer than it was because he's already got to redo it anyway. So, and the, the big kicker is he's running out of paint, so he's got to wait for more paint to show up, which he ordered. So anyway, uh, unfortunately, we won't be getting through the painting process this video, but, I mean, we made some big progress. The engine's in the car, radiator's mounted, I mean, a lot of stuff is done. You know, we don't have a whole ton left. A lot of the big, big, big stuff is done. So that's super, super exciting. But I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully we'll have this thing wired and running by the end of next video. Wish us luck. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Nice unit. <laughs>